Lesson 43, Jesus is Crucified. In today's lesson, we will see Jesus tried, condemned, beaten, mocked, crucified, and buried. The scene is filled with the darkness and depravity of man at his worst. In contrast, we have the light and hope seen in the voluntary surrender of Jesus to the torture and pain inflicted by both man and God in order to take away our sin. When Jesus was brought before Pilate, the Roman governor, he questioned whether Jesus was a king, but was amazed when Jesus remained quiet while all his enemies made accusations against him. Pilate perceived that the Jews were handing Jesus over not for any particular crime he had done, but because of envy, and so Pilate wanted to let Jesus go. He offered to release one prisoner to them, as was the custom at the feast time. He offered to them Barabbas, who was a notorious murderer, or Jesus, whom they accused of being a self-appointed king. The people cried out for Barabbas, showing Pilate just how much they hated Jesus. When the people were creating an uproar and shouting for the crucifixion of Jesus, Pilate finally gave in to their cries, since he wanted to please the crowd. He ordered Jesus to be beaten and then sentenced him to be crucified. The soldiers beat Jesus mercilessly, ripping his flesh open on his back and putting a crown of thorns on his head, beating him in the face and striking him with their fists and with a rod. The soldiers also mocked him as they carried out their cruel beating. When they took Jesus outside the city to Mount Calvary, they crucified him between two thieves. As he hung on the cross in agony and shame, the people reviled him. Even the thieves who were being crucified also reviled him. Some of the people were challenging Jesus to save himself and come down from the cross, and the priests and scribes mocked him, saying, He saved others, but himself he cannot save. The insidious hatred, torture, and mockery is hard to understand when we see Jesus bleeding in utter agony upon the cross, with nails through his hands and feet. How could people be so utterly wicked, especially when we consider that Jesus had done nothing wrong, and in fact was well known to all as a miracle worker who healed countless people. It makes no sense at all, except when we understand that Satan was driving these sinners in their mad rage against God's Son. From noon to 3 p.m. a darkness fell upon the whole land. Then Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They offered him some sour wine before he gave a loud cry and breathed his last. At that moment the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and an earthquake shook the earth. When the centurion who was standing near the cross saw the way Jesus died, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Some of the women who had ministered to Jesus were standing at a distance watching the horror of this evil execution. A man named Joseph of Arimathea honored Jesus by asking permission to take his body and bury it. He collected Jesus' body from the cross, wrapped it in clean linen cloths, and put him in a tomb not far from the city. Joseph had made his tomb for himself and it was cut from stone. He sealed the tomb with a large stone that was rolled over the mouth of the tomb. Again we see some women watching carefully where the body of Jesus was buried. If the story of the crucifixion of Jesus were to end with his burial, what a sad page in history it would be. How empty of all hope for mankind. Unfortunately, man has not changed over the many centuries since that day Jesus was crucified. Men today murder, steal, rape, lie, commit every form of wickedness. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Man was at his worst when Jesus was taken by wicked hands and put to death. 
Jesus only offered God's love, goodness, and his truth and righteousness. Men rejected Jesus and spat in God's face. With this in mind, we can appreciate that man deserves the most severe judgment from God. If we had what we deserve, we would all end up suffering eternally in the fires of hell. However, God's love is greater and higher than all of our wickedness and sin. God is able to rescue us from our sins, from the judgment we deserve, from the torments of the lake of fire. How can God rescue us? Ironically, God rescues us through the cross, that which was the worst crime ever committed by man against his God turns into the greatest gift ever given by God to man. Jesus was not simply put to death by wicked men. He was judged by God for our sins. While Jesus hung that day and endured the hatred, scorn, the pain, and vileness of men's cruelty, he was also enduring a judgment that we can hardly comprehend. He was also suffering the wrath of God against all of man's sin. Here was more than courage, more than kindness, more than benevolence. Here was love beyond comprehension, immeasurable grace, a gift of infinite value. As you consider what Jesus did on the cross to save your soul, I pray the Holy Spirit will give you understanding and convict you of your sinful condition before God. I pray today you will surrender your life to Christ in faith and find the gift of eternal life. Jesus suffered and died to bring you the gift of eternal life because of his great love for you. Will you receive that gift today? But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8